so you got into acting acting classes in undergrad um mm -hmm. through your fraternity um okay so and then I know like there's that video that you did where you talk about Sam Shepard and how you read Tooth of, Tooth of Crime right and yes. that was that was actually your first play it was not my it was not my actual first LSU play I took I guess what happened is I took um I took several classes there were many people uh, that were involved in the program because John Dennis had just come to LSU and was teaching. And, they, you know, it was sort of starting, you know, the religion of John Dennis over there. It was becoming a big deal. And he started, he started the master's program, right? Yeah, he had not started it yet when I was an undergrad. Okay. And I did one play for summer theater there called Sly Fox. And so, uh, that was the very first thing I did, um, and I liked it. I had fun doing it. Um, and but I thought maybe I would move to, um, to to Los Angeles, and perhaps somehow I could like you know direct commercials or something, and maybe that would be like fun because they were like little mini movies or something. And this was all going on in my brain um, when I bumped into John Dennis at Coffee Call in Baton Rouge, and and asked him if I could audition to play uh, Biff in uh, Death of a Salesman. Okay. Is that right? Is that right? I think that's the play. Yeah, they were doing Death of a Salesman. And um, people had said, oh, you could play Biff. That would be a good role for you. Like when I was, you know, when I was first taking classes in undergrad and um, John Dennis, that's the whole story that I tell, you know, that you, that you watch. But John Dennis said, oh yeah, you could come and audition. Um, but I'm also, I'm doing this play, Tooth the Crime by Sam Shepard. And I knew who Sam Shepard was from watching the movie, The Right Stuff. And he was like this super cool dude, right? Um, but I went and read uh, Tooth the Crime and it was just, I don't know, it just blew my mind. It was uh, just crazy language, lots of cuss words. Oh, P.S., can can we cuss here? I don't want to, no, I'll, 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 I'll take it I'm, down. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you if you don't want it, I won't. But I I do tend to cuss a lot, especially when I talk about acting. Um, but there was a lot of cuss words in the play, and um, I found that very uh, thrilling to like say the language and uh, you know because I was kind of brought up, you don't cuss in front of uh, elders and that kind of stuff. I never cussed in front of my parents. My parents never cussed in front of me. Um, but I've I've had a career of playing people that use language fairly uh, liberally, I would say. Um, and this this was a play that had a lot of language in it and it was fun to say. And it, not just cuss words, but uh, like, I mean, it, it, read to the crime and you'll, you'll see what a genius Sam Shepard was. He created a language. Um, they speak in sort of a futuristic rock and roll uh, language that is all made up, you know, and it's about Kind of a street gang techno uh, temperament of actors are out there trying to. I mean, musicians are out there trying to rule the world. You know, gain new new uh, new sections of the territories of the world, and uh, it, it's just it's mind blowing. But it's it's what started me. I did it, and I thought this is what I want to do. You know, it was yeah. like being Hamlet in a rock and roll world, and uh, it blew my mind. You were you were in you were you were all in and I like how like one thing that is so striking and so interesting is like the network that you kind of built in that program I mean you're still like best friends with all these guys um you know the, yeah. king, the king of herrings people which um honestly is my personal favorite um <laughs> Yeah, it's it's something. I mean, King of Herrings, of course, was written and directed by Eddie Jemison and also directed by Sean Richardson, who's the only sort of outsider that we've pulled in who was the DP. But yeah, King of Herrings was Joe Crest, Wayne Parade, David Jensen, myself, Eddie Jemison, uh, Carl Palmer, and then Laura Lampson, Eddie's wife. Um, who was also, I guess, an outsider, but just because she wasn't from LSU. Um, 
but yeah. me and Eddie were doing a class out here uh, in Los Angeles that uh, would meet every Wednesday night and we would just kind of do scenes and write scenes sometimes. Sometimes we would do other people's work. Sometimes we would do David Mamet, Shepard, um, anybody. And then um, Eddie started working on this idea. He wrote a scene and, you know, people got up and read it. And uh, I kind of was just sitting in the audience working with him, like giving him notes. And he would bring, um, you know, the scene back. And after he wrote one scene, he said, oh, I'm going to write another scene for these guys. And it was, uh, I think the first scene he wrote was the first scene of the movie. It's uh, it's him and Gat walking down the street talking about, uh, there's, word. There, there's a <laughs> it word. It doesn't count as a curse word because it's not an actual word. So yeah. you're good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But that's the, uh, that's, that's the, that's the genesis of that project. And he just, he kept writing it until he got the whole thing done. And um, we were going to do the play with John Dennis was going to direct it, but John was getting old. Uh, I, I don't think any of us expected him to like not live long enough to see uh, the film. I think um, mm -hmm. he, yeah, he fell out of doing the play and that's when we decided to shoot it as a film. Okay. But yeah. he, he, he was involved too, sorry to transition away from King of Herrings, maybe we can come back to it, but he was involved as well in um, Perfect Day, right? John Dennis yeah. did the casting yeah, for that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had written Perfect Day and I wanted to, I wanted to shoot this movie and I was trying to remember there's another movie that sort of was uh, kind of a little bit of an inspiration for me, but I came up with this idea and I really wrote it about a girl, but it's really kind of about me. You know, like it's, I just, it's my care. That, that's sort of like something I went through when I was younger and I wrote it. I wrote my character as a girl because I've always found um, women and girls to be more fascinating than guys for some reason. Um, but I, I mean, they're more complicated to me. And I, I, I've, i like, guys are easy. Guys are, um, you know, I, I, went to an, I went to an all boys high school and I was in a fraternity. I just feel like what we talk about is less uh, in depth. Um, and then when I, when I have relationships with women, it's very complicated and all kinds of interesting things come up. So I, I flipped the script on that. And I wrote it and I just wanted to cast it with some young college age kids. And I thought, oh, well, John Dennis has, you know, acting students. I'm out here. Um, so I asked him if I could come in and sort of audition some of his students. And he said, absolutely. And he kind of put it together for me. Yeah. And he, he read it and he had an idea and he said, these are probably the people you want. And so I kind of almost just, you know, I think just took his recommendations. I met them and I said, oh my gosh, she's perfect. Um, mm -hmm. Tara McMullen was the, the lead and she was perfect. Um, and Preston Davis uh, and Eric Little, um, all and these cats. And then Eddie, Eddie I brought in. Eddie, of course, yeah. And Eddie's wife, obviously, Laura. Oh yeah, yeah. I, got, I got Laura to play two different uh, parts. Yeah, and then um, I think Wayne, he did the editing which or no was it yeah yeah he actually did that's the um that you know it's 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 good because you've like studied all this stuff i haven't thought about that but like yeah nobody really had the editing equipment yet but wayne had this great mac computer with it he had like one of the first really professional editing programs and it was slow going because he was like kind of teaching himself how to do it but um i'm thinking like well, okay, yeah, that's right, because I had somebody else edit. You saw the other thing, Sneaking Sally. But yeah, so so we did we did uh, Wayne's, over at Wayne's house, I would go over there and, uh, you know, we'd sit there for a couple hours and edit it together. 